Today we begin at the end with the final book of the greatest philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche. It's 2023 and I'm Jackson Keats. Hallelujah, we're going to see the king. Ecce homo. Latin words used by Pontius Pilate in the Gospel of John as he presents a scourged Jesus, having trudged through abusive denizens and authorities. The full title of the book, Ecce Homo, How One Becomes What One Is, is Nietzsche's last written work, and it's his own interpretation of his development, works, and significance. Who is Nietzsche? What did he accomplish? In the grand arc of his life and work, where does he fit in history? For context, he is the only human I admire. The Ideas Behold the man. In Christ's passion he is bound, beaten, and adorned in a crown of thorns. Christ is mocked, murdered, and risen, and saves mankind. And Pilate intones, Ecce homo, behold the man. Now Nietzsche's translator called this book, Ecce Homo, a work of literature comparable in potency to Van Gogh's paintings. With many things kept in mind, now consider the titles of the chapters. Why I am so wise, why I am so clever, why I write such good books, why I am destiny. In Plato's Apology, he documented the trial of Socrates, in which a great man, a force that taught that the world is rational, and that reason should o'ercrow the soul and encompass the city, was persecuted. He was sentenced to death by poison for corrupting the youth of Athens. So Christ and Socrates. Nietzsche's father died when he was 36, when his father was 36. Nietzsche became severely ill at 36, when Nietzsche was 36. He would suffer greatly, and in the midst of illness would invoke a divine inspiration to produce his greatest and all-consuming work, Zarathustra, the character of Zarathustra, who would impart aphorisms to mankind like a prophet or deity. Why I am so wise. For Nietzsche, the point is not to win, but to overcome one's equal. It's not a matter of simply conquering things that are easy, or people who are simple but to attack only things that are triumphant. And even better, to attack only those things where there are no allies as well. For Nietzsche, the difficulty of the struggle is paramount, so fighting the strongest makes you strong. He also suggests, which some would call apocryphal, that he never makes personal attacks, but he only uses personalities to magnify ideas and concepts that he needs to destroy. Why I am so clever. I have never pondered over questions that are not questions. Nietzsche believes that most of the things that people struggle over, that they obsess about and ruminate on, that most of those things are not questions worth considering, and that this is one of his great advantages, not having to consider those things. He says he never paid attention to religion, that it was something that he could remove and disqualify quickly. God is a too palpably clumsy solution, he suggests. Then he gives some tips. Heavy meals are better digested. It engages the whole stomach. Don't have coffee. It makes one gloomy. Instead, have strong tea in the morning and only in the morning, and then drink water for the rest of the day. Sedentary life is the real sin to the Holy Spirit, to paraphrase. Nietzsche has famously suggested that every day in which one doesn't dance is a day wasted. When you are working, do no reading. Have no external stimuli whatsoever, else some other voice creep in. He suggests that scholars only say yes or no to what has already been thought out, that scholars do not produce or have their own unique thoughts. And then, in a rather modest claim, he suggests that everything that came before is lies. All questions of politics and education and social order have been falsified root and branch. Why I write such excellent books. To take up one of my books is one of the rarest honors men can have. You cannot enjoy other books after having read mine. His thoughts on women. A woman who loves you will rip you to shreds. Woman is incalculably more wicked than man and cleverer. But a woman can be cured by giving her a child. Then he goes through his books one by one and caps off his ideas by suggesting that Socrates is decadent and that Nietzsche's innovation was being the first immoralist, 
to regard morality itself as a degradation. In the seventh part of my dialogue, I want to ask a question. Do you remember the crown? Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man, John 19, 5. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the Logos, the Savior, and none shall reach the Father but through me. Jesus was mocked with a false crown. Nietzsche said, Why I am so wise, why I am so clever, why I write such excellent books, why I am destiny. Pronouncements so bold they are mocked by mortals as Jesus was mocked and fitted with a crown of thorns, though he may be king. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Exodus 3.14 And Nietzsche said unto the reader, I am so wise, I am so clever, I am destiny. This is Dionysus versus the Crucified. I know my fate. One day my name will be associated with the memory of something tremendous. A crisis without equal on earth, the most profound collision of conscience, a decision that was conjured up against everything that had been believed, demanded, hallowed so far. I am no man, I am dynamite. Thank you for watching and listening. Please follow or subscribe. Hey, this is Jackson. We're going to do The Bed of Procrustes next by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And I wanted to thank everybody for being around for so long <laughs> through the other episodes as this was uh, kind of a hobby. And we read a lot, a lot, a lot of books together. But now in 2023, we're going to be advancing, changing a lot of things, and hopefully having even more robust discussions about all these very complex ideas and apply them in ways that, you know, make a whole lot of sense. So it's been great. I've loved it. Bear with me as we fix some formatting things. And like I said, it's going to be The Better Procrustes next by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And the fiction that we have is Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie that we're going through. And we're going down the list of the 100 greatest books of all time. And I think, actually, maybe I'll put that list up on the sub stack so uh, it's easy to reference anytime and easy to follow. But whatever the case, thanks again, whether you're a legacy fan who's been commenting, leaving awesome comments that I've gotten to respond to and things, or you're new here, yeah, we're reading the most important books, exploring the most important ideas, and going to start applying them in significant ways uh, going forward in 2023. So I hope all is well, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>